My original Pine64 review generated some feedback from my subscribers. This video is to answer those questions. If you haven't seen my original Pine64 review, I've put a link to it up here. Most of these questions have been by private message, so I'll keep the person anonymous. However, if you want to be credited with the question, then post publicly or send me a message. My original Pine64 review was aimed more at people wanting to use it in electronics projects. But since I still had it around and you wanted to know, it was easy enough to check these things. <laughs> so it's raining. I was going to show you how to make an Arduino powered coffee table. Oh man. But that'll have to be another time, I guess. Question one. Can you test out Remix OS? Sure thing. For anyone who doesn't know, Remix OS is an Android based operating system that attempts to make it more like a desktop. So this means that not only do you get access to Google Play applications, but a full desktop like experience, complete with taskbar, notifications, start menu, file manager, and windowed multitasking. Not only that, but over 20 different devices are officially supported, but not the Raspberry Pi. Hmm. Fortunately, the Pine64 is officially supported. From the first video, you would have seen I had major issues with the graphics and network drivers when running Debian Linux. Let's see if the Pine has the same issues when running Remix. To check out the network speeds, I ran a very simple web-based network speed tester, which gives you an overall feel for the speed, but the results seem to be too wildly inaccurate. Really, the best test around is the ooklaspeedtest.net, which is available from the Google App Store. I ran four tests in a row, which gave me more reliable results and it is comparable to the speeds I saw on my Mac. So the network side seemed to perform okay. I didn't do any other performance tests on the network side. My intent was to give you a general idea of whether the Pine64 is usable. So what's the video playback like in Remix? I fired up my original Pine64 review video to see if it was actually usable. It will be unboxing the new Pine64. Hmm, it was okay and YouTube will optimize your viewing experience but it was miles better than running Debian. So then I tried the official YouTube app from the Google App Store. I saw fairly similar results when running from Chrome. Nothing conclusive really. It will be unboxing the new Pine 64. I also tried playing a video directly from USB thumb drive, but I seemed to have difficulty with MP4 files, and I didn't have time to investigate why. I also didn't have time to test Kodi under Remix. I would guess that it would be more responsive as the graphics drivers are more mature than under Debian Linux. Next I tried the graphics performance. There are three great tools for doing this, and they all are within the Google App Store. I tried GFX Bench GL first. The usual seasick voyage, which was very stuttery, and indicated that it wasn't doing that well. And of course, psychedelic sleep patterns, and something left over from the 1960s. And then we get onto the real world 3D test. Now, I'm not a gamer, but you don't really need to be one to see that this is pretty hopeless. If only you could hear his scream of frustration. So the results are in, and are abysmally bad. If you check out Pine64's website, then you will see that they are clearly marketing it as a games machine. That's really not one of those. Next I tried N22, which showed the same results. Man, this is so bad. It went through the battery of tests and spat out a score of 22885, which equates to, uh, really, the far bottom of the list, which is around six times slower than an iPhone 6S. Uh, next I tried 3D Mark, and yes, same results, choppy regurgitating graphics with a peak of six frames per second, but the bouncy yellow people seem to do better at 33 frames per second for some reason. So the final score, 1686 apparently. Once again, I'm not a gamer, but based on just how choppy the graphics were, don't use the Pine64 for gaming. Okay, so you have to bear in mind that this is a $29 SBC, you get what you pay for. I'm not sure why the Pine64 company is marketing this product as a supercomputer or a gaming machine, both of which the Pine64 really can't do well. So from a test of Remix, it makes the Pine64 really a nice little usable computer. The network speeds were fine and the video playback was okay. Note that I didn't run any 4K HDMI video tests as I didn't have anything around that could run 4K. However, I did notice two issues with Remix. The OS was sluggish at times and the mouse seemed to lag behind a fair bit and there was this this odd clicking noise coming through the HDMI speakers. It would really be very annoying if you're going to use this as a desktop. Question 2. Can you test out a Raspberry Pi hat to see if it works? No problem. So I first tried a Pi Matrix hat that I had lying around. It's a nice simple I2C interface. Nothing fancy. But as you can see, I couldn't see it on either of the two I2C buses. Long Sleep didn't seem to build it as a module, but it was certainly built directly into the kernel. I then tried a DC stepper motor hat, just in case there was something fishy with a Pi Matrix. 
Unfortunately, same result. I didn't bother to investigate any further. Frankly, as an SBC, it seems to be struggling as well. Don't get me wrong, it actually has a lot of potential, but it's going to be struggling to keep up with a Raspberry Pi. Question 3. Can a stock 64-bit Raspbian or Raspberry Pi 3 image be used on the Pine 64? If you're talking about taking a Raspberry Pi image and being able to boot the Pine 64 up on that image, then generally speaking, no. There are several reasons why. The kernel loading procedure of the Pine 64 is quite different to the Raspberry Pi. And secondly, my guess is that the kernel built for the Pi is excluding some parts that the Pine 64 needs and includes other parts such as binary blobs that may interfere with the Pine 64. So my guess is it just wouldn't boot up. However, once you have the Pine 64 booted up, you can happily use a Raspbian image for the application side. If you are desperately needing some apps or tools from a Raspbian image and you don't want to rebuild them, there's no reason why you can't just mount up a USB drive of that image to root into it and start everything up from there. You may have some issues here and there, but it is quite workable. Thanks for watching this follow-up video on the Pine 64. If you have any comments or queries, then post below. And if there's enough demand, I'll post a follow-up video. If you like my channel, then don't forget to subscribe. I'll be coming out with a new video weekly with reviews on new stuff for the maker community and short tutorials on how to use that stuff to hopefully inspire you. Looks like it's cleared up again. Excellent.